All right. So so uh, there's there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of storm and drong about this Vanity Fair article that just dropped about RFK. Um, so so let so let me let me frame it like this before we really get into it. Is this a hit piece? Absolutely. Absolutely. The, this is definitely written from the point of view that Fauci was right about everything. The jab was wonderful. Any questioning of it is a conspiracy theory. Um, RFK is a is a dangerous kook for risking a Trump presidency. Yeah, that's all in there. The parts that I'm reading all check out. You can backtrack and find in other sources the same information that I'm going to highlight. There's some controversy about a picture here that they claimed was uh, was uh, RFK posing with a the carcass of a dog that had been grilled in Korea. He claims it's actually a goat in Patagonia. Um, but I, I, I didn't, I didn't find that interesting anyway, so it's not featured in mine. They're going back and forth on that. What they're not, what RFK is not denying is the most damning allegation, the sexual assault allegation in the article. He is not denying that at all. Um, this is the thing. An article can be a hit piece and still have facts in it. So the things that I'm highlighting are uh, check out. Um, And I'll talk about some others that I didn't highlight. So RFK Jr.'s family doesn't want him to run. Even they may not know his darkest secrets. Dun, dun, dun. Now, as anyone who's watched the show for a while knows, we were open to the RFK campaign. And then we read his book and came away saying, it's too bad. He, some of this is true, but it's so mixed in with bullshit that in a way, having him advocate for some of these causes undermines them because it makes it so easy for the opponents uh, of the things he's legitimately raising to point out where he's just a dangerous kook. Um, So this is a really good example of this, of his long history of mixing being right on a subject with being just completely irresponsible with the facts. Uh, to the detriment of the projects he gets involved with. 20 years ago, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. appeared in an HBO documentary about the dangers of a nuclear plant on the Hudson River. Indian Point, imagining the unimaginable, directed by his sister Rory Kennedy, pits the crusading Kennedys pictured flying in a helicopter over the nuclear facility against Entergy, the power company. The film argued that the surrounding environment would be made uninhabitable if the plant came under terrorist attack. This was necessarily a high stakes confrontation. In anticipation, Rory warned her production team they had a potential liability. Her brother, though a prominent and successful environmental lawyer known for suing polluters, could be fast and loose with the facts. Quote, he can say some crazy shit, she told them, according to a person involved in the film. Kennedy's interviews had to be thoroughly fact-checked, quote, even though he might come across as an expert, she said. That's who he is. Sound familiar? Sure enough, the film had already been edited when producers discovered that Kennedy's interviews were littered with inflated and inaccurate claims, rendering portions of the film unusable. Quote, it was like, holy shit, says another source familiar with events. We have to get the audio and cut certain things out. We can't really say this. You can be sued, unquote. The experience of having to tear the film apart and re-edit it was deeply frustrating for Rory, especially because HBO had wanted more Bobby, not less. When her brother gave a speech at the film's premiere, wowed audience members asked Rory why she hadn't included some of his more dramatic points in her film. She couldn't tell them it was because they were untrue. Now, that sounds very familiar from what we've seen of RFK's, just his campaign. Forget about about the jab, forget about COVID, just... 
just the campaign where he will constantly say things that then he denies he said or it's taken out of context or I didn't really mean what they said I meant. Uh, Israel fires a- door knockers on the homes of the right. people in Gaza to warn them that they're going to bomb them. They stopped doing that almost 15 years ago, right? Right. <laughs> like he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a bullshitter. He's yeah. a bullshitter. Now, the article does get into other things that we're not going to focus on here because we didn't want to do 45 minutes on RFK. But just, but just quickly, off the top of my head, um, he became addicted. Uh, he doesn't deny this, I don't believe. He became addicted to heroin when he was 15, um, dragged a lot of other family members into their own addiction, can't beat them, join them. Um, I think he quit when he was uh, 29. Um, also struggles with sex addiction, which, hey, look, he saw his father murdered in front of him. I'm not judging the guy, but you have to understand this is who he is. This is this is the reality. Um, in 2001, the New York Post got a hold of his journals, which included pages of sex diaries, where he ranked from one to 10 named women and one to 10 uh indicated how far he had gotten with them with 10 being actual intercourse and he also uh, sick it's degenerate (laughs) and sick he also blamed the women he called it mugging called it mugging like ah you know i tried not to fuck her but uh, she she made me they came on to me two women came on to me at once um and also you know this very catholic guilt thing in the journals of uh, I'm trying to be a better man. I'm trying to resist. Actually, when he got arrested uh, protesting in Puerto Rico in his journals, he described it as blissful because there were no women around to tempt him. So you're talking about a very complicated, very tortured guy. Um, his wife, who had been best friends with his sister, um, found the journal. And a lot of people speculate that's part of the reason that she self-deleted later on they found her hanging in the in a uh, barn on her property um once the divorce was in process she got ostracized he won custody of the kids remarkably um and not only did she get ostracized from him uh, but his sister who had been her best friend also shut her out now what's most interesting to me about the article is the portrait it paints of the kennedy family you know there are these very high profile deaths that everybody knows about like jfk jr with the plane but then there are lesser known deaths like david kennedy who hung himself after the family ostracized him for speaking to the press there's a very the article paints a picture that again matches with other reporting of this really fucked up, dysfunctional, dissolute, too rich for its own good, aristocratic family with a code of omerta that just kind of holds its dark secrets close. And we'll we'll get into that at the end of this. So the thing that has really made news on this is um, his alleged assault of a family babysitter. So his babysitter also worked for the organization he was most closely associated with them, uh, which was River Keepers. Um, So this is the account. One night, Eliza Cooney attended a meeting in the family kitchen with Kennedy and another young River Keeper volunteer named Murray Fisher to discuss business when she felt Kennedy's hand moving up and down her leg under the table. She tried making sense of the incident in her diary, which I have read. In an entry dated November 7th, 1998, she wrote, From everything everybody says about the Kennedys and their babysitters, they had me worried. Now make note of that, what what she's saying. Like people who know about the Kennedys have reason to be concerned about what they do to their babysitters. Not just Robert Kennedy, the Kennedys. Like I have to watch out, be careful. And the other night in the kitchen with Murray, I could have sworn he was touching my leg and hand. It seemed like he thought I was somebody else or wasn't paying attention, like he would come to every once in a while and snap out of it, or I would move away. It was like he was on something or really tired or was missing Mary or was testing me. In the back of my mind, I was hoping it wasn't what it actually was, says Cooney, now 48. Reached for comment, Fisher says he worked closely with Cooney and liked her, 
but wasn't aware of her alleged experiences with Kennedy at the time and feels bad for her. Weeks later, she discovered Kennedy standing in her bedroom. She saw that her diary, which chronicled her daily activities and detailed her romantic life with a boyfriend, was open next to her bed. And she was shocked when a shirtless Kennedy, then 45, asked her to rub lotion on his back. I'm sorry, it's not funny. I just imagined it in that voice. Yeah. Uh, uh, excuse me, I, I have a little eczema. Can you? <laughs> Quote, I thought, isn't Mary home, she recalls? Doesn't she do this for you? She did it reluctantly and quickly. It was totally inappropriate, she says, adding that she stopped recording these experiences in her journal, fearing Kennedy would read them. A few months later, Cooney says she was rifling through the kitchen pantry for lunch after a yoga class, still in her sports bra and leggings, when Kennedy came up behind her, blocked her inside the room, and began groping her, putting his hands on her hips and sliding them up along her ribcage and breasts. Quote, my back was to the door of the pantry and he came up behind me, she says, describing the alleged sexual assault. I was frozen, shocked. He was interrupted by a worker who entered the kitchen. To announce his presence, the man, according to Cooney, said something like, don't do anything I wouldn't do or don't do anything you wouldn't want your wife to know about. Um, okay. That sounds like a pretty credible account to me. And hey, Kennedy's not even denying it. Another another fun fact, uh, though, some of you might remember, I remember, Keaton's too young. Michael Skakel, a Kennedy cousin, was tried, it was about 15 years after the fact, for murdering a 15-year-old neighbor, female. Um, and he did 11 years' time. RFK wrote a whole book accusing two young men who had been completely cleared of the crime of having done it. And, you know, very typical kind of conspiratorial, oh, the whole system is covering up. Yeah, yeah, because what the system usually does is side with the nobodies oh, against the aristocrats, because that right. that's exactly how they would usually play. A, the only reason it took 15 years to catch this guy was because he was a Kennedy. Yeah. He he confessed at the time to having climbed a tree the night before a murder and masturbated looking in her window. And they, oh, no, well, nothing, nothing to see here. <laughs> no way this guy did it. Um, and, and you know who really praised that book and backed up RFK on this contention? Uh, professional scumbag Alan Dershkowitz. Yeah, Dershkowitz. So, so these are the kinds of uh, buddies that RFK associates with. Now, now, just finally, this is what was most interesting to me about this article. Not what it says about RFK, but what it says about the Kennedys. So let's take a look at the speculation around why the family hasn't come out more strongly about this history. Another Kennedy relative told me he has warned RFK Jr., that he would become the target of a democratic machine that would have no choice but to destroy him. They, they've they already destroyed me, Kennedy replied. No, they haven't, the relative said. They haven't come close. That much is true for now. Now, just to pause for a second, that in and of itself is a very damning statement about the Democratic Party and the way that they operate. That This is why the founding fathers hated the idea of political parties because they knew this was exactly what was going to happen. The political parties inevitably were going to become about preserving, protecting and building their own power rather than actually serving the public. And clearly that's where we are. Um, oh, yeah. But, if you were a member in good standing with the Democratic Party, uh, then these would be the conspiracy theories. People would say, oh, that, come on, you can't go yeah. by that. What is that? Yeah. Sweep it under the rug. Right now, it's the subject of an article when I guess they thought he was a threat to Biden. I mean, the article is a little obsolete in the sense that uh, Biden is going to lose either way now. <laughs> they don't really have to do this to get him out of the race. I, it, you yeah. know, it's funny. The article mentions the debate, but I got the impression, of course, this whole thing was written and they just stuck in a sentence yeah. about it at the last minute. So By this the way, final... never mind. It's not important anyway. We're going to lose. Yeah, anyway. it doesn't really we don't matter. Have to, we don't have to print this, but we wrote it anyway. Forget the article. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, these kind of deep in the deep in the in the Kool-Aid Democrats still are going to try to win this election. They're, they're not just going to accept yeah. 
that the election's gone. Uh, but this last paragraph is really interesting in terms of what it says about the Kennedys and what it says about what I what I often call the slavish uh, instinct in people. There is there is aristocracy. I think I, I I favor evolutionary psychology as an explanation for a lot of human behavior, particularly human behavior in groups. Um, I think aristocracy is an expression of the primate tendency to rally around a strong alpha. Uh, figure. Um, so you make that alpha figure a, a king or a duke. Uh, that's the mystique with the Kennedys, because if you look beneath the surface, they're pretty fucking disgusting. Uh, so this last paragraph reads, the question is whether the Kennedy family have the fortitude to break the family oath and level with the public about the brother and cousin they have known for decades. The likelihood says a president a person with decades long personal and professional ties to the kennedys is low now listen to this quote because you pull the bobby thread the whole tapestry unravels it's not just bobby it's all of them you pull the bobby thread the kennedy myth all comes apart yeah that that's very interesting and it's an argument for I felt this way about RFK from the beginning. It's funny. You have all these people who are anti-establishment, fight the establishment. So why you fucking, why, why you bow your head as soon as somebody with a famous last name agrees with you? Why, why do you, why do you fall in behind that person? Because you think like a peasant, you're thinking like a peasant, deep peasantize your mind. These Kennedys are no better than you. In fact, they're probably a lot worse than you. They are, they are morally people you would not associate with if you knew them in real life and their name was not Kennedy and they worked at a pizzeria. So why are you going to bow down to these people? These fucking people have covered up murders. Fucking Ted Kennedy killed a poor woman. She didn't have to die. They waited hours while she drowned in that car. Like yeah. why, why do you admire? Yeah. yeah. Chappaquiddick. Why do you admire these people? Why do you look up to these people? You have all these dead family members, dead of, drug overdoses and misadventure that very often boils down to, ah, I'm a Kennedy. I'll take up my wife and her sister in a plane, even though more qualified pilots won't go up tonight because it's too dangerous. That's the way JFK Jr. died. They're scumbags. They're assholes. They're aristocrats. They don't deserve the money and privilege that they have. RFK Jr. coming out and talking, playing on the nostalgia for Camelot, mixing up truth with facts and, and having that arrogance, that arrogance, this fucking former heroin addict, drug addict, based on the fact that he won't deny it, we'll still call it an alleged assault, but he's not denying it, it's pretty likely, the arrogance to come out, oh, I'm the savior, I'm going to fix everything, that's very, that's very Kennedy. That's very Kennedy to, to think that it's your place to lead the peasants out of the darkness when really, if you look at their house, these people are scum. They're scum. They're as bad as the Bushes. They're as bad as any other wealthy, irresponsible aristocrats. Quite, quite a bit worse than a lot of them, actually. So Sagar caught up with RFK and asked him about this. And uh, the results were tragic and funny at the same time. Came out with a major profile today. I want to give you a chance to respond to this. There's a photo circulating, I believe, of you posing uh, with what looks like a dog. And also <laughs> in, uh, who a barbecued dog. I'm not going to show the picture as a dog lover. I know you have pets yourself. And also a sexual assault allegation from one of your former nannies. So I want to give you a chance to respond to that. Yeah. Sorry. <clears throat> right. um, the, you know, the article is is a lot of garbage um the picture that they said is of me eating a dog it's actually me eating a goat in patagonia um and i on a whitewater trip many years ago on the food life food river um they say there's an expert they have an expert that has you know, identified that as a dog carcass yeah it's just not true oh so, and, and you know in terms of the the other allegations i listen i've said this from the beginning i am not a church boy i am not running like that i said <laughs> that's a hell of a response 
I had a very, very rambunctious youth. Yeah, that's that's but, not exactly the response you're looking for. You're looking for an I didn't do it. Like that, I said in my, I had a very, very rambunctious youth. I said in my announcement speech that I have, a, I have, if I have so many skeletons in my closet, that if that if they could all vote, I could run for king of the world. Mm -hmm. So you know, their this Vanity Fair is recycling thirty-year-old stories, and uh, I'm not you know going to comment on the details of any of them, but. Um, it's, I, you know, I am who I am. You're talking there about the nanny situation. I mean, I, I, I do have to ask her. I mean, are you denying it or not? I'm not going to comment on it. All right. Well, I gave you the opportunity, and officially, it's a goat. Uh, I, I don't, I didn't know necessarily about what. What did they say? It's a spare rib of a canine. I think that's what they said uh, for their identification. But uh, we've got it uh, from you. I'll let the, uh, I'll let the anatomy experts be the ones who can determine that. Yeah. I don't know. I kind of believe it was either a goat or he thought it was a goat. I don't think he'd pose for a picture like that. We're not going to show the picture. I mean, yeah, it we're would, not, that we're not picture is in that. such poor taste. That that picture is in poor enough taste the New York Post blurted out of their video. So, we're not going to we're not going to go below them in terms of our and, level of taste. But and, and I that's not really what's interesting uh, yeah. in that article. Yeah. Um, or what's interesting about this video? I mean, the interesting thing about the video is that he doesn't deny having done it. I mean, that's that's pretty much an admission when you're not denying it. Yes. Uh, when you look at the life history, hey, it's not that I don't think a person can redeem themselves or overcome past sins or a person should always be judged on uh, the things they did in the past. Um, but a guy with a past like this... Um, very rarely will come away from that with a completely changed character. Like to me, the most relevant to who he is now, do I think he's he's going to run around and pull a Bill Clinton and start grabbing the interns? No, not really. I mean, he seems to have conquered those demons at this point in his life. I, I Do I think he's going to be shooting up in the White House? No, he seems to have been have conquered those demons. What is most concerning and relevant to the office he seeks is the HBO story, which I think is very evident to this day in the way he plays very fast and loose with the facts. And I think you could also argue that there's a certain Kennedy-esque carelessness with what the consequences are for people around him of his personal behavior and pronouncements. Well, that's the thing. I mean, and I think people's attachment to the Kennedys is, A, that they're kind of this unlikely dynasty, right? Um, and B, that, you know, obviously JFK uh, got in trouble with the wrong people, uh, which cost him his life. And he would have all indications were that he was going to try and make peace and, and chart a very different course for this country than we ended up going down. I mean, you know, right. people say, like, in for terms of the 21st century, that Supreme Court decision gore v bush was the turning point and we've been in the dark universe ever since well you could say the same thing you know uh about jfk you know were he not killed what would the country be what would the world be with him in it uh and in power in those very very transformative years in the 1960s so you know i think there's reverence for the kennedys on that score in terms of their personal behavior yeah they they behave the way a lot of you know power mad aristocrats behave i think politics attracts high testosterone people who are very very aggressive and very egomaniacal and perhaps even maniacal beyond that um and so i think there's a certain personality type that this world just draws into it which is why a lot of people who rise to these high places, when you look under the hood, they're these really kind of loathsome characters. I think you can analyze it on two different levels. Um, and I think a lot of people who like the Kennedys do. I don't think you'll find too many Kennedy, I, I, I won't say stand since that, that's probably too shallow, but admirers who are going to defend what Ted did in the car, right? Uh, you know, leaving the woman there. Some maybe. But most not. I think most people think of them as, like I said, this unlikely dynasty that got a little too close to power for the deep state's liking, and there's been a vendetta against them 
sins, which they couldn't some, you know, in some more, you know, superficial cases call a curse. Right. Um, Mm -hmm. So I think that's what I think that's why people tend to defend them in terms of this. Yeah, I think on the personal the personal stuff. uh, Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, you'd like to see a denial when you're accused of (laughs) sexual assault. Not well, I had a rambunctious youth. I'm not going to address it. That's basically saying you did what the piece uh, says you did. So, yeah, I mean, in that sense, it's a hit piece. On that level, I don't really respect it because they would never look under the hood against people who are in good like standing Joe with them. Like Joe Biden. Yeah, like Joe Biden. Like Joe Biden. Look what they did to Tara Reid. Look what they did to Tara Reid. She actually tweeted Tara about Reed that, Tara Reid had more evidence than this woman does. Absolutely. Absolutely. The dog, the goat, whatever. Um, but, yeah, I mean, the the uh, I think the most relevant part is the front of it where you know he makes all the because he's a lawyer too that's the thing i mean he's a right. he's a celebrity lawyer with a huge ego and a big mouth right. and uh yeah that makes him uh, an unreliable source of information on a lot of things now what what good lawyers do is they couch bullshit in a certain amount of truth right, right? and he right. does that too which is why he some does. people see value in in his work uh, the juice isn't worth the squeeze, in my opinion. It never was. That's why I was never really on board with him. Um, and obviously, as his Israel Gaza stance became clearer and clearer, that was just totally disqualifying altogether. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's that. I mean, I, I don't know how relevant this. I mean, like I said, interesting week for this to come out because this came out at the at the at a period of uh, I, I, it, in a news cycle, I should say, where third parties are the least of Biden's worries. Uh, very true. Um, I, I think when you look at the Kennedys with JFK and RFK, they were close enough to the urban uh, politics of the Irish political class that the Kennedys rose out of. Yes. To, although they were wealthy, they were close enough to that political base and its needs and its sensibility to really represent that. They they were able to kind of be the best apotheosis of that whole late 19th century, early 20th century, um, urban immigrant kind of machine style politics for the working class and the poor. They were close enough to that to bring that sensibility into their politics. By the time you get to the next generation, I mean, they're just, it doesn't matter that they're Irish Catholics. Yeah. You you give people that kind of privilege. They're wasps. They're going to yeah. act like wasps. They're going to act, the you know, hellfire club, you know, kidnap some peasants and chase right. them for sport. You know? <laughs> right. it's, yeah. it's what these people are at this point. Like it's still pretending that they there there's any connection to to that to the Kennedys of the sixties, who whose legacy was more complicated than we like to concede, whatever good things you might say about them, e- even on their own terms. Um, you know, it's ridiculous. And and again, it's it's that peasant mentality. Oh, he's named Kennedy. Let's listen to this crazy asshole heroin sex addict guy. Yeah, let's get behind him. Please clap. <laughs> 